Let's talk about Salmonella species. As usual, we are going to start with the classification of a gram-negative bacilli. Right, I told you they are uh, classified according whether they can ferment lactose or not. Right, so lactose fermenters, which you find here on the right, can be further classified into fl uh, fast lactose fermenters or slow. Right, first you have E. coli, Klebsiella, right, we talked about this, right. So we are more interested in Salmonella. So firstly, it doesn't ferment lactose, right. Then you go to whether it has uh, oxidase or not, right. So Salmonella doesn't have uh, oxidase enzyme, right. Next stop, uh, does it produce hydrogen sulfide in... Um, TSI agar. TSI is just a triple sugar ion agar. Does it produce uh, hydrogen sulfide? Yes, salmonella does that. All right. Um, later, I'm sure I'm going to make a video comparing salmonella to shigella because they can be confusing these two. Right. I will make that video later. Right. But for now, we are focusing on salmonella. Right, some general information you need to know about this bacteria. Salmonella is a non-lactose fermenter and is motile like salmon, salmon fish. It's motile, right? And it produces hydrogen sulfide. Right, uh, the next stop, V antigen, right? V antigen, don't be confused. This is a polysaccharide, right? So this is a polysaccharide capsule that surrounds the O antigen, that's protecting the bacteria from antibody attack on the O antigen. This is just like K antigen, right? So V, just to confuse you, but you can remember V by virulence, right? But Salmonella, but with Salmonella, they named it V for virulence. Okay, fine. While there are over 2,000 Salmonella serotypes, recently, uh, all the clinically important Salmonella subtypes have been classified as a single species, Salmonella cholerasius. Salmonella cholerasius. Despite this attempt at simplification for clinical purposes, Salmonella serotypes are often still divided into three groups, Salmonella tithi, Salmonella cholerasius, and Salmonella Enteritides. Alright, so let's talk about the main conditions caused by Salmonella. Right, Salmonella differs uh, from other enteric because it lives in the gastrointestinal tracts of animals and infects uh, humans when there is contamination of food or water with animal feces. Right, so here, that's where you need to focus. It stays in the uh, GIT of animals, and then if that animals too get in contact with either food, that's vegetables, maybe in the garden, or water, that's how it will infect humans. Salmonella is most commonly acquired uh, from eating chicken and uncooked eggs. Salmonella type, very important, is an exception as it is not zoonotic, right? So a zoonotic organism is an infectious disease of animals that can be transmitted into men, right? So Salmonella type is carried only by humans, right? So it's an exception only by humans. Salmonella, like Shigella, is never considered part of normal intestinal flora. It is always pathogenic and it causes uh, four states in humans, right? So four main conditions, right? And they include the following. Uh, fever, femur typhoid fever, carrier state, sepsis, and gastroenteritis, that's diarrhea. So let's talk about this one by one, starting with typhoid fever. This illness caused by Salmonella typhi is also called enteric fever. Salmonella typhi moves one step beyond the uh, 
entero invasive e coli and shigella what do these two do they are invasive right so uh, back to salmonella typhi after invading the intestinal epithelial cells it invades the regional lymph nodes and uh, finally seeding multiple organ systems during this invasion the bacteria are phagocytosed by monocytes and uh, can survive intracellularly right so salmonella typhi is a facultative intracellular parasite salmonellosis right the disease caused by uh, this bacteria uh, starts 1 to 3 weeks after exposure and include fever headache abdominal pain uh, that is either diffused or localized on the right lower quadrant like uh, like over the terminal ileum right so it also mimics uh, appendicitis as inflammation of the involved organs occur the spleen may enlarge and the patients may develop diarrhea and rose spots on the abdomen Right, which is a transient rash consisting of small pink marks and is only seen on light skinned people right not everyone okay uh so uh you will diagnose this infection by counting the blood urine or stool for treatment ciprofloxacin and ceftriaxone are considered appropriate therapy Right, uh, let's talk about the second state, which is actually carrier state. Some people recovering from typhoid fever become chronic carriers, right? Harboring salmonella type in their gallbladders and excreting the bacteria constantly. So these people are not actively infected and do not have any symptoms, right? So remember a famous example uh, in 1906. When typhoid Mary, Mary Malone, an Irish immigrant who worked as a cook, uh, spread the disease to dozens in New York City. All right. Some carriers usually require surgical removal of their gallbladders to cure them. All right. That's all about the carrier state. Gallbladder. Right. Uh, right. Let's talk about another condition, which is actually sepsis. This systemic dissemination is usually caused by Salmonella cholerasius and does not involve the GI tract. Remember that Salmonella is encapsulated with the V capsule, V capsule. So our immune system clears the encapsulated bacteria by opsonizing them with antibodies and then macrophages and neutrophils in the spleen. Right, the reticular endothelial system will phagocytose the opsonized bacteria. So patients who have lost their spleen, like asplenic, either from trauma or sickle cell disease. So sickle cell is functional asplenia, right? It's difficult uh, clearing encapsulated bacteria and are more susceptible to salmonella infections. Right, so you need this can be a buzzword as splenic individuals, right? You need to think about this salmonella if we talk about gastroenteritis. If you are enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up, right? The patients with sickle cell anemia are particularly prone to salmonella osteomyelitis, thus bone infection. Right, so vigorous and prolonged antibiotic therapy is required to treat salmonella osteomyelitis right the last condition is called uh, diarrhea that's gastroenteritis salmonella diarrhea is the most common type of salmonella infection and can be caused by any of hundreds of serotypes of non-typhoidal salmonella the presentation includes nausea abdominal pain and diarrhea that is either watery or less commonly contains mucus and traces of blood. Fever occurs in about half the patients. 
This diarrhea is caused by a yet uncharacterized cholera-like toxin, right? So uh, causing watery diarrhea and sometimes also by ileal inflammation, mucus diarrhea. Treatment usually involves only fluid and electrolyte replacement as antibiotics do not shorten the course of the disease and do not cause uh, prolonged bacterial shedding in the stool. So uh, the diarrhea only lasts a week or less and then you'll be fine. So if you enjoyed this video one more time, give it a thumbs up. If you get the opportunity to donate at least a dollar, just in the comment section, there is a link to my PayPal. I will highly appreciate that. Until next time.